Gives you an overall piece, you know. Like, oh. yeah. I was telling Crystal how it was just when I figured it out. Some lady was letting the critter out of a live cage, you know, she trapped something. She was just right out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you don't see that every day. Okay, Chris, are you ready to go? The groundhogs must be on move today because there was one just off of my house. I was coming down the road and sure enough, the old groundhog was out there. I love how they finished out this place. Yes, I do too. You probably have a better appreciation of it than most. I really do. I just like how they were creating with the framing. Because you think about that, it's just rough cut blocks. Uh, sure. And basically, then you use the rough edge for the frame on the window or around the light edge. Yeah. Incredible. Okay. If, excuse me. Excuse me, if we could please get everybody's attention. I want to welcome everybody to the Warren County Board of Supervisors um, work session today. Um, the purpose of this meeting is to take a detailed look at um, our engineer's department's budget um, to try to see if there's some costs that we can take out of the budget to examine what's, uh, what's possible. What the Board of Supervisors is attempting to do is to um, Create a, create a levy rate for the rural basic fund that uh, is congruent with what the people are looking for. So this is just a function of, we've heard a lot of, we need to tighten the belt. We've heard that, you know, Warren County isn't spending their money wisely and um, that Warren County's trying to have meetings behind the public's back or trying to do quick meetings. Um, I want to assure everybody that um, that's not the case. We represent the people, and it, to me, it doesn't matter if you're in the rural areas or the, the cities. I mean, we're all part of the same team, we're all part of the same county, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go through our budget meeting with our engineering manager, and then we'll open this up for questions afterwards. You, I've been getting a lot of emails, there's a lot of misinformation out there about what we're trying to do. And I think if you allow us the opportunity to answer your questions, I think everybody can find some peace in what, what's happening. So with that, um, can we get a roll call, please? Here. 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 OK. So yeah, the first thing I'd like to do is have conservation just give you a minute or two history of uh, this building and welcome you. Uh, here to to this facility. So Mallory, could you please? Good morning. Thanks for coming out today. I'm glad you guys all found the Middle School Lodge. Um, we just built this lodge. Um, we just built this lodge. Sorry. Perfect. Um, so this is the uh, Middle School Lodge. It was a, a donation from Phyllis Dyer um, in memory of her parents, uh, James and Geraldine, of her parents, Middle School. Um, so we offer it for uh, a situation like this.
also out of state as well. So um, it's still fairly new, so we're still getting the word out. Fairly new, so we're still getting the word out. Questions, we're more than welcome to answer those. And again, we appreciate you guys coming out today. Just a quick question for you. How big a complex is this uh, in terms of um, acreage and how does it fit with some of the other nearby uh, properties that you maybe are working to uh, preserve? Um, so for this complex, what's connected to the Yvette Nature Center, which is our main hub. So we, we, we own an 80 acres, the Yvette Nature Center is an 80 acres, and we actually lease this 80 acres. But we purchased to build this facility. We purchased seven acres out of the middle of that building. We purchased seven acres out of the middle of that building. The gentleman that really wants this ground to eventually go to the conservation board. Now it's eventually go to the conservation board. That's going there. Okay, excellent. But overall, we see over see about 2,700 acres of seven acres. And so we also have some other facilities. Like we oversee, there's a barn and shelter at the Greenville City. We have a lot of trails. Just address the funding side of things. Where did your funding come from to keep all this going? We try to, you know, I try to, we try to bring money in from outside sources. We try to bring money in from outside sources. White Trail needs major repair. White Trail needs major repair. We can't sustain that with tax dollars. It's just sustain that with tax dollars. We have applied for grants. We've got a six hundred thirty-seven thousand dollar federal grant to prepare some of the bike trails. We're in the process of writing the grant now. Process. So we will try to bring money in. We will try to bring money in. But what the supervisors did for us in the last few years was really great. We, we never had a reserve fund. And so if we wanted to apply for a grant, so if we wanted to apply for a grant, unless we went to the supervisor in the water and asked for $100,000, that's what some of the grants matches. That's what some of the grants matches. That's, that's what some of the grants matches. Um, the supervisors allowed us to start our reserve fund. Supervisors allowed the money if you rent this facility, that money goes into our reserve fund. money if you rent this facility, that so money goes into our reserve fund. So in the way you're donating so conservation, when you, you use this facility, you can take that money and just turn around and then use that money. Turn around and use it in conservation. And this building was mostly donation. And this building was a very small percentage that we used out of our budget. Very small percentage. Yeah, the individual donated like two hundred and twenty thousand dollars for this. Two hundred and twenty thousand dollars for this building. Thank you. Well, thank you for that. <clears throat> Okay, so um, if we could just, um, what I'd like to do is, David, if you could just give an overview of the engineering department and uh, just start with kind of what you're tasked with on behalf of the county overall on uh, your department and how many people uh, you employ and just give everybody an overview on the engineering department. The uh, one thing I can say on behalf of the Board of Supervisors is that, or I, I don't know if I can say it on behalf of these members, but on behalf of myself, I can say that um, we're, the, we're really pleased with David Carroll and his, what he does for the county. We, we think that, uh, I, I personally believe that he's one of the best engineering managers in the state of Iowa when it comes to the work that he does. So there's a lot of support for David. and. Um, We've, over the last few years, increased his budget significantly. The goal, my goal in every aspect of Warren County is to increase the level of service uh, to, so that the residents, um, you know, feel, feel the impact of what the county's trying to do. We're trying to do that in all areas. What, I, what we're hearing is that's not necessarily what we want to do in the rural part. So it's really important to hear what you have to say. Um, later in a little bit after we get done with this because if it is the rural residents perspective that they want to maintain or lower the level of service then that's what this board intends to do if you it, and we've got examples of the tax scenarios there's been a lot of misinformation but this is a defining moment for Warren County on the direction we're going to go the next few years if we're going to be a low-level service county then that's the decision we're all going to make together. If we're going to be a high-level service county, 
we'd like to make that decision together. So with that, David, if you could um, just kind of give us an overview of your department. And I'm telling you, this is a thankless job that David Carroll has. You're not going to make all people on all 780 miles of road happy, no matter what. Um, I think he's done a tremendous job. When I call and say we need rock in front of a house, someone calls me, he's out there doing that. I mean, he's doing a good job. So anyway, enough of, the, of that. David, could you just go ahead and get started? Yeah, like I said, we have around 40 in LA, uh, have around 40, 900 plus roadway miles, 200 regular miles. Uh, if you take the present value figure of all the infrastructure, it's well around a billion dollars replacement cost if you just look at it from that price. So we're out there managing hundreds of millions of dollars of our infrastructure on behalf of the county. Um, and I'll just jump right. Uh, to the meeting, uh, to the 10 minutes into it. Uh, we submitted our budget prior to January 1st of the board. After a, about six weeks, we uh, got a message that we need to make some deep cuts and I did so. And that's what you had before you today, and we've been asked to make further cuts, and those cuts we triple our service. Thank you. So, could you go into the explanation of how the current uh, funds are used to maintain the roads? You said you have 40 employees, uh, but how are those 40 employees deployed? And uh, what are the types of activities that they're involved in? Are they all in road repair work? Are they all in construction or, or maintenance repair or combination? How does it all work? Well, it's it's all duties as a side, however, there's it's all 12 blade districts, 12 blade operators, and keep a spare blade, blade operator. and we've got a pipe crew, a uh, right of way crew, uh, right of rock hauling crew, thanks to the board giving us a sliver of extra money in one year, sliver of max transfer money in one year. I purchased uh, three or four belly dump trailers, and uh, we always thought that was a good idea without having any authorities in the county to actually have a rock hauling crew. Finally, able, able to achieve that just three years ago. Um, but they do all sorts of things. They're out working overtime, they're out spreading rock on our road, they're out working overtime, they're wearing snow. And I think a lot of people miss the human element that's behind the wheel. And the human element that these guys and gals on the road, these guys, um, really dedicate a lot of time to the county. And a lot of them choose to work here today. They don't have to choose to work here today. With those 12 districts then, how do, um, walk us through a little bit about how that, let's, let's take from the road grading maintenance of uh, the gravel roads in the county, let's just talk to you a little bit about how that actually happens, how often does it happen, how often do you put rock on the roads. Uh, so if you got 12 districts, is what you're gonna share uh, basically happening in all 12 districts every year or does that rotate? Are you able to put gravel on and, and uh, maintain the roads in all 12 districts the same? Uh, I guess you just walk through and uh, well, it's on a case-by-case case, uh, case case basis and takes a lot of judgment. Uh, as far as the window of opportunity to build crown on roads, it's very limited. That can be due to weather, it can be due to just dust control. There's three or four months out of the year we can't touch surface road because of dust control. We have to be very cautious about waiting for some of the dust control safety becomes an issue. So it's incredibly case by case and when you factor all those things in, you might be you might have two weeks at the end of the season to get the crowd built up prior to the end of the season. So time's limited, those guys work long hours and they build that crown as quickly as possible. But um, if you know, if you get into the amount of time they can spend building a crown, then you have to look into things like stopping dust controls as a, as a convenient practice. And you have to look at the weather. You can't open up a road right before a precipitation event. You know, although you might get the phone call that it's pobbled out and you want to go grade it. If you go grade that road, you're going to create an exponentially worse problem by doing so. And that's how it works. So when, when we're looking at the, uh, the regular maintenance, let's say we've just got a semi-normal year. Uh, 
uh, how often would the roadway be cleared? Would every road in the county that travel get cleared every year? If you had a perfect year, every road would be cleared at once every two years. Every road would be cleared once every two to three weeks. Yes, that would be a perfect year. It was a great to have to operate at three to five mile per hour speed. If they operate any faster, they create their own wash for the faster. And that's throughout the whole county, that's not just in one district, but it's four districts. Because each district consists of around 80 miles. Each consists of around 80 miles. And then if you want to calculate what three miles per hour is, I'm going to calculate what three miles per hour is 160 lane miles. What is there, David, what, what happens if we um, do if we if we change the schedule of how often you grade or how often you put rock down by like 25 percent? I mean, can you quantify if can, are we able to lower the amount of work we're doing on roads to meet our budget needs? Well, I attended the uh, comment meeting yesterday, and about one out of two comments had to do quite negatively about the roads. Uh, so it's apparent that. Public feels strongly about the public. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, where so is. So, I, I guess, like I mentioned, if there's any further cuts that take place, it's going to cripple those services. And you're, you're talking about this since your last meeting with Megan about where. I'm just talking about the latest. The latest budget. Okay. So, Megan, can you pull up. Um, where the current budget's at and what the uh That's we're having some technical difficulties. We're having a technical That's right here. We can go through every item in detail. We can go through the item in detail until the end of the week. Yeah, let's brief. So through. with this budget that we're gonna walk through here, these numbers would this maintain the rating that you just mentioned a moment ago or are we pushing that back to like every month? Or, you know, what, what happens as a result of the implementation of this, this budget um, that we're looking at right now? With the most recent cuts, we did cut into the rock buds. However, we did, did not cut into the amount of quantity of rock. So this, this latest cut, we did, did impact the rock buds. However, it just doesn't allow us much flexibility to select various materials for the roads but it won't impact the level of service. That's why I'm saying that further further cuts would definitely impact the level of service. So what do you mean when you say the material? Is there a difference in quality than what you're saying? No, there's a difference in price between clean you know, rock versus rock is fine versus different types of stone. The clean rock nowadays runs 22 to 23 dollars a ton. And the rock is fine, and the fines tie the roads together around 15 to 16 dollars a ton. So we drop the amount drop per ton to fifteen dollars and fifteen dollars and well, it's fifty dollars and seventy-five cents a ton. We're still assuming though that our county crews can haul in over fifty-four thousand tons per year on the semis and sixty-six thousand tons per year baseline with all the tandem max trucks. And then if we can't keep up with that, sometimes we uh, hire local companies to haul over stuff. Hire local companies to haul over stuff. So then you're saying now, if we would make any further reductions in your budget, then now we're starting to impact actual service. Correct. But at this moment, we, the main difference between uh, where we were and where we are right now, this is discussion is that we're looking at basically the quality of the, the rock that you're hauling and putting on. So it's the price per ton that's been the largest reduction, correct? Correct. Not necessarily the level of service. No, not the level or amount, but just that flexibility or amount. And flexibility. You know, if you have a real bad year, you might want to walk with me. If you have a bad year, that hasn't happened, but are we taking that chance? But further reduction in this, in this budget, would result in service reduction as well. That's correct, unless someone sees something I don't know. Um, in this budget, how much of it would relate to um, patching and uh, um, service work done on hard surface roads? I'll just go to that plan.
We requested 460,000 in hatching. We did not propose any cuts in that. We did not propose any cuts in that. I think that's for obvious reasons. And below that is a breakdown of our hatching dollars. So you can see 60,000 were assuming we we'll spent spend tree removal, 48,000 for street sweeping up in the Greenville Plaza area, uh, and then some miscellaneous crack ceiling projects on asphalt roadways to uh, keep them on par. Um, it's like waxing a car, you know, you want to keep its useful life, you got to go crack seal. It's the most cost effective thing you can do on an asphalt road. Uh, 60,000 county highway estimate for your landslide patch analysis. We cut a, uh, as part of these cuts, we cut a $750,000 landslide repair project out, so we're proposing to patch it up in the meantime, so that's that number. And then the rest left over, $226,000 for in-house county crews to do concrete patch analysis. My understanding is that um, you're having to, you've had to do over a period of time here, uh, a walk, so to speak, where you put stakes in on the potential landslide areas. How many of those types of areas are you monitoring right now? Um, zero, because after we fix one, we never see it. Okay, but you don't have any others than this? No. One, so those past issues that you're seeing have been... But you will have one landslide in the future, I'm sure, because the soil is not that so we work in there about how do you identify those when the things like potential issues with your roads start sliding off the face of your roads sliding off? So at this moment you don't have any active projects. I thought we had one one that we were working on. These current reductions reduced that we estimated that the S23 landslide would cost seven hundred fifty thousand dollars by the area because it involves replacing the entire section of roadway and gets into the super elevated section of the roadway. So that has been taken out of this budget at this point. Correct. So uh, what would be the, uh, what would be, uh, how are we going to deal with that? Then? At this point then we're, we're going to patch it with this $60,000 and as discussed. David, if it moves even an inch, then we're going to come back to the table and take the job. On your list of projects for fiscal year 2024, David, do, are there any projects that you could take off the table to help us to help us balance our budget? The only projects you can take off the table now are federal matches, so you can do not federal matches. Okay. So that wouldn't be a very intelligent thing to do. Probably not. Okay. So and let's just go through those projects. I don't know if you can see that. There's the HMA resurfacing. HMA. You know, I know these are recent projects, but. Some various projects that are happening. Where are those? Okay. Liberty Center, R57. Those use part of market dollar to welcome to the revenue sheet of the actual budget. Or if you're questioning here. So when we get reimbursed for federal aid projects, uh, that hits our revenue side, and those are the projects that are we have a federal aid transportation alternative program project, which is a coverage for sidewalks and bike trails, as Mark mentioned. Uh, we get funding for sidewalks and bike trails internally. And there's 113,000 that's for safe routes to school in Greenfield Plaza. And then the other uh, one is for a bridge, I believe that's uh, 200 south of G76. 180 south of G76. So it's likely an eight hundred thousand dollar project, or a six hundred forty thousand dollar project. So if you cut that project, you're cutting that federal money. <laughs> and then how many other projects are under the funds of this one? Just what's listed for federal matches, not 
for good measure. Yeah. 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 The other two products we have, Liberty Center Bay products, we have Liberty Center Bay, which is this plant set. So you can see the location map. I don't know if this projector is pretty small for everyone to see. So what's the cost for that project? Uh, we let Liberty Center and R57 under one contract for cost savings. It's going to save a lot more money to have one contract to save cost on projects versus letting them out separately. Uh, yeah, around $2 million for both projects combined. And is that all in one fiscal year? It's all in one fiscal year, but that's your farm to market account, and you'll not see that. So here's the kind of the plan view of the Liberty Center area. Yeah, no, this is the darker shading is a uh, full depth concrete shading, the intersection up there, and the rest is all last. So just back up a second. That this project or, or those two projects combined cost two million dollars, and you're saying only one hundred thirty thousand dollars is uh, represented in your budget for the fiscal year two thousand twenty-four. Where does the other one point seven or one point eight million dollars come from then? Okay. So that's not a that's not Warren County tax money. Okay. Okay. And while we're in Liberty Center, that north south road, not on the market road, is it on something that it will never get cheaper than the asphalt companies are already there doing asphalt. So we want to go, we want to be guns a blazing on these two projects because, you know, it improves our roads immensely and it's low impact to our overall budget. This is what I'm hearing from you. With the economy scale, you're going to get that north south road. Yeah, never going to get that. Okay, so that's off the table. We're, we're not. Yeah. Okay. That's not an option to consider taking that. And the only other project that touches the budgets that agreed to apply the storm sewer harbor project that went over the upper request. Right. That's the only the other projects we cut we cut the other projects. We rejected the bridge deck overlay project, which is cost savings. And just for the the public's um, information when we when we use ARPA request that was federal money that came into Warren County a couple years ago that we we that doesn't impact our local taxes whatsoever it's a separate revenue stream so when you hear us saying we used ARPA money that's not Warren County tax dollars per se um, that um, that were used you know for project this is federal money that was given to Warren County how much was that $10 million. Yeah, the ARPA money helped, helped our department purchase a third motor here. Uh, we had a few breakdowns this year, but I hate to say we expected those breakdowns because motor graders are 18 months out. So it was good planning to purchase them, but we're still waiting at 18 months for delivery. Your semis are two to three years out. I mean, in a way, um, like when we when we um, decided to buy a motor grader with ARPA money, that was money that was taken out of um, what would have been required in our in our general fund to purchase a motor grader at a year or two or three years down the road. So it was a benefit for Warren County taxpayers to receive the ARPA money. We used that money for one-time purchases that would benefit the overall county in in every instance. Okay, so Megan, can we kind of get a general understanding of what our deficit is in the rural basic fund? Because the way I'm reading this, we're still a million dollars off, a million thirty-two thousand dollars off. Am I reading that properly? Okay, so we've taken as much cut out of the engineering department as he can possibly absorb based on what we're hearing this morning, and we still have a million dollar um, without impact on service level. Without impacting service levels, correct. So the decision for the public and the decision for this board, um, we, we have three options at this point the way I see it. We can um, ask David to take another million dollars out of his budget, which he um, is telling us and telling the public that that will critically 
make him critically unable to maintain the roads at the levels that they're being maintained now. So we can still do that. We can still go to the engineering department and do that. That's, that's our decision. Um, we can take this money out of our savings account. We can take a million dollars out of our secondary roads account. We can say, hey, we're gonna, this is a unique situation. This is why we have savings and we can use our fund balance. Um, we have several different fund balances, but we have about, and Megan, why don't you give us the exact numbers, but approximately uh, $4 million in our secondary roads fund balance, or maybe even more than that. So the secondary roads fund balance will already be fund balance. Hold on. Excuse me. So the secondary roads fund balance will already be taking a $3.3 million hit um, with the uh, budget the way that it is. But one thing to note for that is that that was budgeted for by the engineer um, to have a hit to that fund balance. But that will leave the fund balance at 2.3 million. Okay. Um, and then our rural basic will be taking a million dollar hit, which will leave it at 2.7. Yeah, the understanding at the time with the previous board was that our fund balance is going to take a hit to get the maintenance facility built. We have, we have savings accounts just like for every other, for every reason that everybody has a savings account for landslide emergencies, for things that we can't anticipate, and um, so and and a million dollars in an emergency isn't a lot of money in a lot of cases. We're, it's just a, a safety net for the county and for the residents to have a fund balance of 2.3. And we, <clears throat> so let me just summarize what I, how I see this and I think what the decisions that we're, we are faced that are in front of us. Uh, <clears throat> we have, we can l lower the level of service, which nobody wants to do. It would be a big mistake to lower the level of service. Um, we can use our savings account and basically dwindle a $2.3 million savings account down to $1.3 million. And you know, we can do that the next year too, and then we won't have any savings. And so maybe, maybe that'll be a good situation. I don't think it will be. I think you should have a savings balance of at least $2.3 million. So it would be, it would be at 2.3 if, if things stay the way that they are. So at the end of next year? At the end of this year, Okay. 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 Let me ask you a question. How do you want to conduct business today? Like raising payments so we're being civil and we're not interrupting? But that what you prefer helps? You know, that is per that's perfectly fine. If you have a question, I'd love to hear from the public. I do. Okay. Uh, I'm James Butler. I live over here in Conger. Uh, it sounds like, I, I'm not trying to pick on anybody. You, you guys have a tough job. David and I, we used to be that originally that day. I was hard on you. Mm -hmm. I was hard on uh, you. Mm -hmm. But your questions seem to be a prescript that you're asking me. Yeah. These are intelligent people out here. I think some we're getting loaded in the weeds on some things that we don't need to. Our roads are horrible. Our roads, you know, anywhere you go, you know people live in Warren County or live in the cars without even being able to see it. So we don't want to lessen the service, but it sounds like we're kind of setting the stage today with some of the questions for what we're going to talk about at 10 o'clock today about why we think we need to raise the plan out. So I would recommend it again. I think you guys are doing a better job than you first came. And that takes time. But our roads are, are okay.
Go ahead. Thank you very much. Go ahead. I want to know why farm to market roads are federally funded and there's a very small percentage of our taxes going to them. Why hasn't the farm to market road down here, R57 South, which I have been complaining about for at least 12 years, has not been paved. They paved a residential district up there in Norwalk, and I know nobody wants to make Norwalk mad, but uh, it's got a 35 mile an hour speed limit, and they did it twice because they used subpar materials on the first one, and in the meantime, our road is just crap down here. I, I took some pictures of it today, if you want to see them. The only way they fix things down there, we have several washouts on the side, and I think mean, they've got big huge ditches down there and stuff. They put a little sign in there, a warning sign, you know, those ones with the bars on it. And they don't do nothing about it. There's some of those that's been down there for probably eight to 10 years. And they've never been fixed. Crystal, do you want to answer that one? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my fault, right? No, not your fault. I mean, you, you were on the board. You were on the board when that decision was made. I wasn't. No, not 12 years ago. Um, as far as the 80th Avenue and why it was paved? It's R57. They changed it to 80th. The one that's in Norwalk that connects to R57. Right. The reason that was paved is that base was failing. And the ruts in that, hear me out, the ruts in that were three, four foot deep. Okay, I drove it with our engineer myself because I was upset that the money was gonna be diverted from 57 up to 80th Avenue. Now. Why did they change it to 80th Avenue? It's always been R57. I've been down there since 1959. Because it's within the city limits of Norwalk for a part of it. The second part of it is the mile that is ours. It's nice. It's not been Nicely annexed, made. It's nice. but it is kind of an island, and that is ours, but it's right in the middle of Norwalk. Why did they get that when that is farm to market you road down? Well, as far as why that was annexed that way, I don't know. But the traffic count up there is over 4,000 a day. So should we fix a road? It's only because they paved it. You know, on our traffic count down here, since they paved it clear down there to, uh, what is it, Quebec Street, has like, I, I would say at least quadruple since they put that paved in there. Because people use that as a way to uh, get back and forth to their jobs. And they drive on that, and they drive fast. Yeah, we get semi traffic down there all the time. In the, in the fall, I don't mind it because that's farmers hauling the grain to market. But we get it all the time. I told you I would let you and I and the engineer sit down to talk about this. Okay. That That is what we need to do. Yes, we do. This is a, a meeting about the engineer's budget currently. I understand your concerns, but that cannot be addressed with this budget. Um, yeah, what about all these dead end roads like Dakota that's been paid? I do not know why Nixon. those were done prior to me being on the board. When you pave a road, it should be all the way. But that's not the way it was done before, and I was probably because of budget. And the engineer before probably did it halfway because he couldn't afford to do it all the way. And that's pretty much why this is being done today in front of the public. Okay. So that the public can understand why some things were done the way they were because this board isn't giving the engineer the money he needs to do what he can do. Okay, I got another question. Hey, 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 hold on. You're dominating time. There are others okay. that want to. I'll wait. Please do. Okay. Thank you. I'll wait. Go ahead. Go ahead. Over here. We have a comment from our engineer. I just want to say that I, I, just, I realize that people want the right to pay one, but we have so many existing highways that are failing and probably the we need to fix those first. We need, we need to update the existing infrastructure we have before we spend millions of dollars to track down the roads. Like G76? Yeah. G76 is on the short list of roads. We're doing R57 this year. Uh, 
Scotch Ridge is on the list. Ridge. And that's, that's on the list because it falls within the circle boundary and the NBO boundary, so there's extra federal money up there. That's on the list. That's 23 between Milo and Tona is on the list. And that's that $7 dollars list. Yeah, this, this spreadsheet is the farm market, but not about the five year construction program, not the spreadsheet that we use in our own. Basically, all of our FM. We can't see it. All of our FM funds. Yeah, that's not the best thing. Because there's restrictions on how. How far you can borrow ahead, which just if you let the project now you're negative three million dollars. And the restrictions on how much you can save up. So in our five year plan, we're saving up to do to do and then it drops down, we can't let any more to let the raises back up. And all of our FM funds are going towards overlay for existing highways. And then once those are done, we can start talking about making the aging roads. But we well, have if they get most of that money from federal tax money. Why haven't they been using that? I didn't know that. I, all I have yeah, is one right county right just right, right, right here. Yeah, and the ages are right here. If you look at the beginning, this is 2014. You know, your limits, you have to stay within your limits. Grand projects, they set max bar ahead of this. And you look at 2014, we did enough work to bring it back into these limits. Because in 2014, you had so much surplus, you were about ready to lose funding to other counties. So we came in and did this. Now, what that means is you want to add a project like G76 to the five-year plan. That means you have to take another project out. So what we do to fix that is we apply for all sorts of additional grants and funding. So if roads like S23 between Milo and Lacona say get $4.6 million in raise grant funding, then we can add roads like G76 to the five-year plan and freeze up funding for future projects. We're, we're constantly trying to apply for federal grants that is a form of funding to add extra projects that we use to improve the That was always somewhere else. Well, I mean, very few projects we actually do. They're all funds, they're all HM funds, they're all SPG funds, those are federal. And we do what we can do to try to get extra money. Years ago, we got 1.6 million earmarks in that infrastructure bill. We applied and got it. We haven't appropriated that much. What you can spend it yet because the federal government works slow. We got that for a bridge over the North River. So that's earmarked towards that one. And then we spent the last week trying to apply for a new federal grant called the Raise Grant. We got a 40 page packet of things submitted. We're trying to do everything we can to get new revenue streams. But so is everybody else. Okay, let's just let's just hold that right there. Are there is there another question yeah, right here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, he just said, as far as I'm concerned, new revenue streams. I see realties involved with revenue streams, and back in 2010, you know, the interstate took out trees. They bought 28 acres, or not bought, but purchased the easement on 28 acres to plant trees to fulfill, fulfill that need. Mm -hmm. The first time around, they planted all the trees, and they were small ones, August 1st of a very dry year. Guess how many lived? Not very many. That cost. The easement cost two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand. The trees cost over two hundred thousand to put those trees in. Twenty eight hundred of them. And basic, they came back and they had to do it. Last year again. And I was a little irritated because I wanted it done right. August first. You know, I think anybody could agree in here. You know, they wasted two hundred thousand dollars. And you talk talk about revenue streams. They spent time it was all done on my project right there to get those trees planted, and they may be still there's still more planting that will have to be done next spring. They wasted five hundred thousand dollars. David, is that, call is that a DOT? Is that a DOT issue? It sounds like a state project that has formed weapon mitigation and stuff like that. So if you impact any weapons, that's a very real thing on projects. Uh, thankfully, these days, there's 
just weapon mitigation banks in the area, so you don't necessarily have to go that route. It doesn't pass the turn. So you purchase land at a certain ratio. If you just turn one acre of wetland, you go buy five acres at the weapon mitigation bank. Uh, just to give you some information on probably what the state's doing. But what now? You know, what, I, what I'm saying is what I, the way that was handled by DOT, and I'm not saying it's the county. Okay. But the county needs DOT money. But when the DOT wastes mm -hmm. half a million dollars on this little project, then you guys are wondering if we can't get in enough money to take care of our roads, which I totally, totally agree. Okay. And this is what I'm saying is that, you know, because when I asked the inspector from Claire Sheridan to come up, he said, I don't have time to come up. My response to him was, do you pay taxes? I got a little sarcastic with it. Yeah. But they did. They took away half a million dollars on this project so far. Thank you for that. Question? Uh, cool. How about you? I'm Jonathan Kimba. I live just south of Norwalk. Um, so I farm in three quarters of the county, not three quarters of the county, but three different quadrants of the county. And I have a 17 and a half foot wide combine. I have a few years ago, I had to come down every 28 through Martinsdale. They were doing the bridge construction over the Little River. I literally could not get to my farm to stop the pipe and I came off of Lisbon without going seven miles out of my way because there were no bridges that would support the weight of my combine over these roads. So what I ended up doing is, is tying the traffic on Highway 92 and went down through Conover and then there's a three-ton bridge there. I, I ended up having to go another three-quarters of a mile around. The bottom line, um, what the county is offering us for roads from a farming perspective is a joke. And, and when you, get into these situations where you've got these stakes out in the middle of the road, it's dangerous. Uh, just, just northwest of Spring Hill on the curve there, there's one of those sticking right out the road. And if I come around that with my combine, with the head off of it, my combine, still 17 and a half feet wide, I have to go out into a blind curve, and I get 20 miles an hour, you don't have that kind of negotiation if you need a car that's flying home from work, uh, and you end up killing somebody. And so, our roads are failing, but I also know uh, my parents have a manufacturing company over in Iowa, and it's very common in that business to use practices like Lean and Six Sigma, and you work with your HR functionalities to make sure that our people are working efficiently. Mm -hmm. And for people that I've known that have worked in the past, or currently work with the engineers department, uh, you go in the maintenance shed, we talked about this last week, there's a lot of times that people are working and there's also a lot of times that people are not working efficiently. They might be working but it's not efficient. They might be working, and that's where I think what we're getting at here is we're talking common sense and I, I know that from my experience that broadly speaking, this isn't Warren County in general, but broadly speaking, common sense is not very common in government sections because it tends to be, well, that's a state thing. That's a local thing. That's a county thing. That's a city thing, and that's not my purvey, so I'm not going to deal with that. But I used to live on the Butte Street, and the bridge that needs to go on the, on the Butte Street just west of R63 is, has, has been taken out because they, they took it from like a 10 ton limit down to a 5 ton, and I think when they finally closed it, it was a 5 ton, but it was failing. And a friend of mine who lives on that road went down and asked one of the people that I was working on the project, hey, I see that you've got this new cold in. Are we talking a week till this is real? Oh, no, it'll take us at least a month till a month and a half to back till that. Guys, I live on the 24 Highway. I had to build a crossing over Old Run Creek because of flooding. It, it has two eight-foot diameter culverts. If you come west of Pet Cemetery, you cross R57. I'm that guy with the like, gray house in the red barn that sits up on the hill. To get across that floodplain, I had to elevate it five feet higher than I thought I did. I won't even tell you what I spent, but I put two eight-foot culverts in there, surrounded it with concrete, and I had the Elder Corporation do that for me. That took them a month. That was two eight-foot culverts. When I built my road, it was a half mile back. When I built my road, the first thing we did during construction is we put not one, not two, but three inch rock down. And I know that some of the citizens of Warren County will not appreciate having to drive on three inch rock, but I can tell you what that did on the road base. 
It's the same soil as y'all are working with. It's the same soil as You put that three inch rock down, it has a larger footprint. It packs that base. Then a few years later, you come back and you put your one inch pretty stuff on top that makes this all happen. But now you're building the base of the road. And in my experience, the tonnage cost of that rock at three inch is not much different than it is at one inch. And one inch clean is very expensive. We don't need a one inch, we don't need one inch clean. We don't even need two inch. Guys, like on the Duke Street where I used to live, put some two or three inch rock down. Let vehicles pack that in, build a base, and make sure you crown these darn roads. If, I, 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 I have thousands of acres, and I can tell you, if you can build the drain from underneath, if you can get the water shed off the top, the underneath will dry out. If we crown these roads, it will take care of it. But if you look at most of the roads I drive on, and I have driven on hundreds of Warren County gravel roads, those with pickups, semis, machinery, everything else, these roads are not crowned. We might be making progress toward them, but the ditches aren't ready. I also farm in Iowa County over in East Kyle. One third of the population is in Warren County. In that county, the roads are way better, and it's not because there's less traffic on them. It's because the county is doing the job, you'll go along periodically and you'll see them with their excavators digging out the ditches, rebuilding the ditches, rebuilding the crowns. That has to be happening. Yeah. And I know I'd love to see some of these other roads get paid, but man oh man. Let's start with the basics. Let's get some common sense. David, can you can you comment to crowning and it's a really bad ideas, but for each size rock on the roads. Uh, yeah, it might be okay for semis and large pickups, but it's not for small attachment and vehicles. And typically what we see over time is that rock comes up to the surface. <laughs> We receive a lot of complaints due to pop tires and things of that nature too. And pop tires, you know, that would exponentially increase uh, the amount of shredded tires on the gravel roads. Uh, as far as county crews doing bridge replacement projects in the house, uh, they say you know, it cost us about a third of what it does to contract it out. Okay. And a lot of these delays don't have to do with county crews; they have to do with trucking and trains. Manufacturing industries, as he mentioned. Uh, just the precast company the other day that supplies these culverts got all the copper wire shot out of the that shot down. So it's kind of a domino effect, and if you look at what's going on in the world today in the trucking industry and the manufacturing industry, the inflation, the cost of goods, you can't pretend like it doesn't exist. And we do constantly have people keep cleaning ditches. We have a ditch cleaning crew. Do you have a question? Okay, let's go ahead. Let's move on. Question over here. How are we using the loss tax? Uh, the local option sales tax is 100% used to reduce rural tax levy rates. Well, I'd like to have proof that it's actually been being used on my property. I'm 90th Avenue. No, no. Lost means that your property tax rate is lowered. That means that there's less, I um, mean, you don't have to pay that. Uh, I'll talk to you after the meeting. Yeah, other counties that implemented loss, a portion of that towards the infrastructure, we opted to put 100% towards the Yes. Well, I'll still talk to you after that. Um, <laughs> tax relief can be road projects. If the project were to cost tax, then it's property tax relief. So, tax. if our loss tax was what, 12 million last, right. year, last, year, last year, it could be used for road last year. We received zero revenue from Pardon, pardon me? We received zero revenue from the loss tax. So what I'm saying is, it, it can be used for that. Yeah. But no, it can't, not in, well, not in Warren County, because you've chosen not to do that. If the project would have cost tax, your property tax it was dollar for dollar offset by the local option sales tax. So you've already made the choice. You, the county here made the choice that was more important to have the lower property tax rate. So 100% of that goes to reduce your, your property tax. Otherwise, you'd have another $2 more in your um, property tax rate. And I 
I see what you're saying, but I'd like to see how it would have been. Also, just for the gentleman back here, the farmer, um, and appreciate your comments very much and the, the challenges that you're facing. Uh, just, did you say it was Iowa County? Well, just, just to put it in perspective, our rural levy rate is at $1.67 here in Warren County. Iowa County is at $2.50. Right, but they also have a third of the population. But the point is, it's valuation that's based off. They have another 80 plus cents of revenue that they're using to maintain their roads and things. No, no, this is, this is, this is the actual property tax rate. So whatever they're generating in the county from the rural, that would be $2.50 is the per thousand valuation that they are collecting. So you're not, just to let you know, that's an 80 plus cents difference in property tax rate that those folks are collecting in Iowa County. So they're actually, as a county, they've chosen to put more money or to collect more money through property taxes to maintain roads and other things. We're only at $1.67 here. In fact, we're at 50% of the rate that we were five years ago before the lost tax. Most people don't understand that, that we chose here in Warren County to reduce our property tax levy for the rural levy by, it's now nearly 50% reduction from what it was 55 years ago. Saying you chose to do that with that same increase in the property tax, but now no, you no. want to raise it back. Raise it well, that, but the, the, yes, because of what you're saying you need. I'm hearing people say here things aren't in a good condition, but the choices are being made here that at this moment, and I wasn't on the board, I've only been on the board two months. The prior boards listened to people and the people voted with the local option sales tax that it was a dollar for dollar reduction and that accounts for $2.5 million of tax reduction for the but rural you're not folks. we are losing that money. You're getting it in tax revenue. We are not. So in, in here, no. the same. The no. It's going to you. you. It's in your pocket because it hasn't been paid out. That went back to your pockets. Can, can you explain one thing on this on this property tax? So like comparing Iowa and Warren County, for example, mm -hmm. if I go to the far right side of that column, Warren County shows seventeen million nine hundred eighty thousand nine hundred forty-nine, and then I go down to Iowa County and I see nine million three hundred forty-seven thousand six hundred and six. So uh, that's roughly half uh, that Iowa County has. Uh, so how does that? But you also know that their population is less. So they have that, that factors in as well. We are the 11th largest population county in the state. So in, in many ways, you could say that their tax per capita is probably much higher than what ours is. So I build a house down here, I'm 12 years old. gravel road three times this year going to my house. We threat one rock, never get my rock. I haven't seen a grader on my road, I don't know how long that's took ten years to get them to come out and fix the ditches so the water wouldn't run down the ditch. My fence is out my pasture. It's a butcher mess still. I don't know how many county supervisors make this guys out there that do fire, 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 fire. Every crew that's come out there says it's a good job. And what have I got to gain in 12 years of being out there and nothing has changed? Do you know how to raise everything on me? I have no phone service. I can't get a hardwired phone out there. There's no internet. I have no gravel roads I can pass on. And you're going to jack me up? I'll move. Um, could you, where do you live so that our county engineer can respond to? Well, back in seven years. You fixed that road a million times. Down there, put your rock, your rock, more rock, and kind of come down and have the dishes. I think all of them spent on that, doing it eight, nine, ten times, rather than doing it right the first time. 
City of Indianola is interested in that property, but we're still going to be um, on that for the next couple years until our building's finished up. But we'll definitely probably be selling but there is that. Income potential. Yeah, absolutely, there is. Okay. Um, the new maintenance facility. What are the costs looking like to maintain that yearly moving forward? Like, what is the budget going to look like for that in comparison to what it is right now? Uh, basically, we did an energy star review on the Those are great questions, and, and ultimately what that is, is we're, we're all kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place on this deal because of what the state's doing to us in a couple different ways. And so, attacking David and about like, yeah, the lack of right. things, but then you're also coming back and you're saying, well, we don't want to raise taxes. Okay, well, how are you going to give David the rope that he needs yes. to help? You all, we did that. Yeah. Basic services for what we pay. Period. So, Norma, go ahead, and we'll get right back. I'll get to you. She had her hand up for a long time. Don't talk about how bad the roads are here. Go talk about how bad the roads are. Hey, I lived there for 33 years. The reason that you have some wash out is you have these beautiful wash out hills. The road in front of my house, where I used to live four years ago, every spring I had ruts that took the bottom of my car out. I called the engineer, they would come and rate it because it was that bad. We had lots of farm to market trucks going from my house. Semis totally loaded in January. I'm not seeing that as bad as here. I'm not seeing that. Folks, the roads up there are awful because they're flat. The roads down here have issues because it's hilly. Down here have That's where we live. It's hilly. Iowa roads are notoriously awful because we've got 16 feet of 
dirt. 16. Iowa County may have a little bit higher. Iowa County may have going up to the top. Northeast Iowa doesn't have our problems. Nor does they have any. That's the location where we live, and it's a challenge for the engineer to live, and it's a challenge for that. My comments to those. My question is on the other hand. For you, David. So you said that you were putting R57 and Liberty Center together in a bid, correct? So how many miles of R57 will we be talking about naming those? And how many miles of that will we be talking about? How many miles of it Liberty Center area will we be talking about? Maybe four miles from Highway 92 to Springboard. On 57. On 57, and then all the Liberty Center area, the north south road takes a little dollar, the east west road takes far north. And how many miles is that? And how many miles is that? Maybe a mile combined, a half a mile. Okay, so the majority of the work is on the R57. Yeah, we'd like to go farther than four miles, but like, as that graph kind of shows, we have to that kind Understood. And I understand paving a new road. And I understand again, Boone County, there was a road not too far from us. You have to have a base, a sub base, because of our horrible dirt here. We have that clay and everything like that. My husband had to leave. He deals with that all the time as well, because he was interested in all that. Question S23 landslide you're talking about, right? How many miles? Uh, number one, how long has that road been there? Number one, how long has that road been there? Yeah. Paid or yeah. When was it? The, obviously, the difference between then and now is the fact that it was paved, and that's what's causing the landslide issues. And that's what's causing the landslide. I'm wondering what's causing these landslides when that road has been there so long. I'll have that answer when I get the geotile. I'll have that answer. When okay. The, which forms the basis of our design? Okay. So those are things. It's like okay, that road is probably been there for a while. Why are we having slides on some of these areas? Is what my question was. Because hey, the the glaciers went through here a long time ago and left this nice and hilly, which is what I appreciate about this place. But there are challenges here, and I was just trying to figure out why they were caused. Thank you. Do you have a question, Larry Bryant? I got a farm on R57 or 80th Street, mm -hmm. and I don't know how many people here is actually built road or had anything to do with that. I was on the sewer build, uh, board and the road commission uh, at another uh, area. <coughs> and gravel really doesn't fix any gravel. Uh, you can dump gravel on a poor base and you still got a poor base. It's like uh, 80th Street. About two feet in from the edge of the road where the water runs down, that road will actually start to cave off into the ditch. And until you get the proper base down, uh, I, did, I did my driveway. I got 500 foot driveway just like this gentleman back here. I packed in the big rock first. I mean, that's not so much something you can do after a dinner room but, or a section. And then I put the small rock over that. FedEx can get up my driveway anytime during the winter. It's at over a 6% grade all the way to the top. They may get stuck right in the middle of the road before they get there. They, that's happened along with the ambulance and everything else. But, but they can get up there. What happens as soon as your roads start to deteriorate like that, you got UPS, FedEx, uh, multiple cars, they, they cars. can't pass anywhere in the center. So when they go off the edge, as soon as they go off in the ditch, that leaves a rut right there when they get drug out. And then that whole thing deteriorates the whole road across there. Uh, we got an area by the culvert. If somebody got over there right now, it's coming into the road, they would turn their car over. I mean, it just goes from worse to worse to worse. And that's what causes a lot of the uh, bad spots on the road. But I'm, I'm a little, little at a loss with this uh, maintenance building that we're building. Mm -hmm. who, who was the one that decided that that uh, we needed to keep all of our, what I'm hearing is we need to keep all our vehicles inside. It's usually wise to keep your 480,000 dollar wire range inside of the did you let uh, everybody else know that? Mackinac and, and Des Moines and, yeah, and, and you know, Osceola? Yeah, the facilities, they store all their stuff inside and they put it where it And why would they have to concrete the whole you know, football field around the whole place? We're not concreting a whole lot of the concrete. The driveway, the road going in there. Are you going to have a gravel parking lot? We're on the concrete and gravel. We're on the concrete and just the entrances to protect the paved roadway. And so all so the equipment that's coming in with chains and uh, graders and all that stuff, uh, that concrete's going to hold up. Yeah. 
Well, you well, think with all the gravel and the uh, maintaining on there, you think they can maintain that little spot right there. Uh, I would like to know the total cost on concrete to that building. Fine. Six cents on the floors in there. Cock Cranny don't even have a fence yeah, around there. They're being able to make snow and then our county park clear vehicles and scrapers and the rubber raiders and everything else, they don't even have a fence. And that concrete <coughs> area there, that's all gravel. I was pouring rain out of that and probably lost off plan in 1980. And it's still the same way as the concrete trucks and runs and all that. I don't see any need for, for any concrete except for if you have a wash bay. But that's just a waste of money for them. Six million dollars is a lot of freaking money to park trucks. Why are the buildings so far so off the road? Six, 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 first place. Six, 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 I think if they were made, it's because we had to keep them closer to the road. We have neighbors in the. Uh, yeah, yeah, we do we want to shine lights into the house that are out of the We want to be in the neighborhood. Why, that, why did they pay almost uh, $10,000 an acre for that property? I can't answer that because the site was selected in 2009. Is that company even still working with you anymore? I see online. Looks like we're still making progress on the way. So, I wonder if that's right. Okay. 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 So, um, for. We appreciate all the input. I think we're learning a lot. What we'd like to do is just get back to kind of our budget meeting with David for a while and please hear us out. Um, what we're trying to do is get to a resolution that's palatable for everybody and that might be impossible. But I'm an optimist and I think we can, you know, if you allow us to discuss further on how we're going to eliminate this deficit, what we're going to do potentially with our levy rate or if we're going to take money out of our savings account. I think we just have to have a discussion with the Board of Supervisors. Could I just say one more thing, Ben, that I got from this guy here? And, and, uh, G76, I've been uh, out here, I think, two years in a row. Uh, we used to call it Dead Man's Corner in Stewart when you have a real hard S curve. When you come out of New Virginia, you got three really hard S curves there. And people come around there, you know, 55, their cars are leaning. And you kind of wonder sometimes, you know, it scares you a little bit. Them three corners right there. Uh, especially where the gravel road comes in there, whenever they patched the road there, when it was still 28 degrees, they put asphalt down in the patch mark and then dumped a load of gravel on top of it on a concrete road on the freaking corner. And I just seen it as, oh my God, someone's gonna get killed here. So I called in and said, hey, you kind of gonna be responsible if a motorcycle hits this gravel or something, or somebody dies, the, the county's gonna be getting sued. And uh, they came out, swept up a tiny bit of it, but how is the freaking rock even going to infiltrate the, the asphalt when it's below freezing? They did it way earlier. Are you talking about spray injection? You have like, you guys talking about spray the chips, the clean chips, and high tar. They fill with hot tar in the, in the patches, and then they just yeah. dumped a whole load of gravel on there for you to fill in the Yeah, no, it was below freezing. It, it wasn't even close to being warm enough. That's your opinion. Well, it's the weather. I can look back and look up the weather. I call it in and complain about it. You can't, you can't spray that with too hot because now we have a car down on you. So yeah, we have to do the cold temperature. That's correct. Yeah. So in the cold temperature on the highway, how is that asphalt, that rock going to penetrate that asphalt on the corner? That's just irresponsible. I don't have to be an engineer to say that. Okay, so we're not going to get anywhere on that one. Let's, uh, what I'd like to, what, what I'd like people to understand right now is that we have a million dollar uh, gap that we can we can fix pretty easily. We can slash a few more items out of David's budget. That's option number one. I, I'm not going to propose that. The second thing is to take money out of our savings account. I'm actually opposed to that because it's not sustainable over a long term. I'd like to have a balanced budget where our revenues meet our expenses. That's really my only dog in the fight. And whether we're decreasing services and, de and keeping taxes the same, that's, that's, we can make that work, and I'm fine with that. That's actually the very easiest thing we can do. If you guys want to keep your levy rate at buck sixty-seven, then we'll just we'll do that. It's pretty easy. We'll, we can have that done tomorrow. The other thing I'd like you to consider is a, is a um, what are your specific uh, implications to your overall property tax burden if we raise our levy rate up? 
and we get to David's budget. I'd like the community to understand that. Okay? Is that fair? Yeah, I'd like to hear that. I'd, I'd really like the discussion to go to what are we going to do? Not, not about a patch of road that happened 12 years ago. Because we really can't do anything about that. But what we can do is make the right decision for the residents of Warren County from this day going forward. Okay. Do you know what the tax implications are to you if, you, if we raise the taxes? You don't know that? Would you like to know that? But I wasn't finished. It, what about? Okay. I'd like to know. Uh, I'd like to say I'd like to use the savings so the board doesn't get into it and use it all. So the board doesn't get it at another point in time. Well, we're going to use it all in a couple of years. Yeah, I know. We use all the ARPA funds. And they can be used to help the ARPA funds. So. Uh, they were used for the roads. They were. Yeah, they absolutely were. The majority. <laughs> Saves money, but not ideal. Saves money, but not ideal. How do you do your bids as far as uh, contractors? Several? By, by code. By code. Yes. We either, either bid it, either the state administers the bid, if it's farm and market, the federal way, or we do both farm and market. So we're not buying $500 damage? No, we're not. OK, so Megan, can you take us through um, the levy rate options? Did everybody get a handout? You need a handout? No. Nope. Nope. Would it be 
Yes, and you're receiving that, that benefit. Yes. Receiving that. Because, sorry. Would it be correct to say that without the local option sales tax, the local basic rate this year was roughly three dollars and sixty seven instead of one sixty seven? That yes. would be correct. Your rate could be up to three point nine five uh, if we didn't have the local option sales tax. So that's why that's another reason to pay attention to the legislature because if anything does change. The county will not have a choice but to raise the role as a basic rate. Because those have that is exactly what has been offsetting your levy rate. So it's been just decreased. So we, get, we reduce your levy by what we receive in the plot and the sales tax. So again, if you look at the bottom of this chart, you'll see that if your levy rates stay exactly the same, if they stay flat from last year, you are going to actually end up with a decrease. Um, but if it went to the max, your taxes paid to the county, which obviously is just a portion of your property taxes, um, would increase 26.64%. It wouldn't be an 80% increase of your overall property taxes. Overall property taxes. Say that again. 26% increase of 20% of the tax. No, no, she's on, on the total. Road, so it would be 26% increase of your, all of your property taxes that are paid to the county. All of your property taxes that are paid to the county. Okay, well, what you're trying to get at is your overall property tax bill. The county portion is 20%. Yes, that's correct. It's not your overall taxes overall because that includes the school district that you're in. So it's only in the county portion, not the school district portion. 26% increase on that 20%. Correct. Correct, correct. That's a correct. That's correct. Because when, when we're hearing 20%, we're thinking, okay, we pay X number of thousands in an increase and that is going to be 26% is a lot. So it's and again, it's a little bit confusing. Yeah, so, if you go to the, so we'll go through so to the next page of the handouts. Yeah. Again, this is showing the rates of all of the counties in Iowa. <laughs> so, if you look at the, the second page, it looks like Warren County is highlighted. We actually currently, for this fiscal year, have the fourth lowest rural rates. So, uh, You'll see the 1.67662. And we are the 11th largest county in Iowa. And we have the fourth lowest rural basic rate. And that's because we're applying the, the lost tax. Yes. Yes. To yes. That's exactly right. You're that is. still getting the same amount of money. Yes, you are. You're still getting the same amount of money because you're applying the sales tax to them. So, but. The one, the, so what you want to keep in mind is if anything happens to that loss, that would affect your levy rates. That, because that's because <laughs> reducing your levy rate currently. So and if you go to the final page, 
Oh, yes, 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 What this would do, what a what a tax increase would do, is it would sustain our budget for the fee, for now and into the future. So we wouldn't be taking money out of savings for a couple of years to put a band-aid on this problem. Um, we wouldn't be slashing. Mean, we've already reduced the engineer's budget in all our budgets significantly. We wouldn't be putting that in a level that decreases services. So that's an option for us. So does everybody understand, are there any questions on levy rate versus taking money out of savings versus slashing the engineer's budget? Because what I'd, I'd like to keep this, I'd like to understand what the public thinks about this issue. So we can do what's in your best interest and what you want us to do. Because this, this is the decision for the Board of Supervisors right now. It's that simple. If the state comes through, then it's fine. No. 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 Because we're still in the same position we're in right now. If anything, we're going to lose with what the state's proposing. And that's what's going to happen. So what the state's talking about, we're in a lose-lose position. Now, just a little bit of a side note here. If you take this this rate page that shows where we are and how we compare to all the other counties. I'm not saying we're going to do this or even suggest that we do, but just for informational purposes to kind of put it in context. Even if we were to move and add a dollar to our present rate, that would put us right between Decatur and Lynn County. That would mean that we'd still be the 19th lowest. But do they apply their sales tax to their model? That's not a relevant point yes, here. Because that's in this model that I'm talking about, that's not the point that I'm talking about. So that's a totally different issue you're raising. I'm just saying that if you look at the rate itself, we would move from the fourth lowest to just the 19th lowest, even if we were to raise the dollar. I, I know that that's a terrible thing for people to even consider because things are tight. But also we have to put in context what the lost tax has done for us, and it literally has dropped your rate in half in the last five years. And Megan's point here just a moment ago was that if we didn't have that local option sales tax, your rate would be three dollars, what was it, three dollars and ninety-five cents or something? Yes. And we're at one sixty-seven. They went down 22% last year in that particular levy rate, in the rural levy rate. They went from 207 to, well, well, in that particular levy rate it did. Now, your other levy rates may have went up or down, and that's a pretty complicated formula. But we're here to talk about... Yes. Hey, that, that's, a, that's a good thing, by the way. <laughs> yes, it is a very good thing that your value, the values of your homes are increasing. Well, we never get it when we sell. Well, oh, you don't? No. Oh, you just you sell it for a loss. We never get what you value our property at. Oh, okay. I don't know where you live. No, that's not either. the case of most people. In that's not the case. <laughs> that's not a realistic. Uh, this this is a positive thing. Yeah. This, this living in Warren County is a very positive situation for people. 
when, you're about, when your assessor can't keep pace with the value of your homes, that you want to be in that situation. That is a very good thing for us. That's what we're talking about. What's that? A lot of people don't want to sell. I've had the same property since because there's about fifty million. Yeah. Because uh, $80 annual increase in your taxes is worth every penny. And, then I, and I can assure you of that. I totally get it. So what I'm hearing is that with all the inflation effects, because our, we get affected by inflation, but unfortunately, so does everything that you guys have to pay. So does everything that you guys have to pay. And I would, and I would, I would anticipate, based on what inflation is doing, wages. Like we, we have a lot of increase. We want to pay our people well at Warren County, and we want to do uh, some of the right things around that. I would anticipate um, a dollar increase this year and a potential, you know, small nominal increase next year to keep pace. Just so you you understand, and that's just that's just guessing at what the market's going to do. Unless there's one other factor that comes in here, and that is total valuation, new valuation that comes in can yes. make up that difference. Yes, and that would be the same. So price. that's the one thing that you look at. Um, we're in a, a nice position here because we are a growth county from a population standpoint. We've also been a growth county in terms of valuation. We haven't even brought up that point today that the new valuation, this is new valuation, this is not existing, this is a new valuation added another nearly million dollars to just the county's coffers. The new people that moved into the area Correct. that built houses and Correct. That Correct. And so because of that, whenever we have new valuation added, that actually makes up, and that's a hedge against inflation. So as long as we're growing and we have new valuation being added, we can actually keep our other rates lower going forward. So it's, it's actually a good thing for us to have more growth. Deal. One of the things that we also have a, a problem with here in Warren County, which is a, unfortunately, we, it's, it's, a, it's against us in terms of the, the types of property values that we have. You look at residential property, it's a great thing, it's wonderful that we're adding that, but it only brings in you know, roughly 50% of what the value is of that property. Whereas if you have commercial development, industrial development, or other types of business related development, that brings at 90%. So in other words, if you're going to invest or to support something that would offset the residential property levies, you really want to support business growth, business development, and business property value increases here in the county because that's where the true added value comes to offset all the other things that we want to have done. Okay, what about all these businesses that are being built down here? They get tax incentives from everybody. Who are you referring are you, to? Give us, a, a give us an example. example. Of where do they get tax incentives? No, no. What is the particular business that you're talking about? I don't know, but you Well, then, then, then it's irrelevant what you're talking about. Do they get anything? You tell me. That's right. We don't have that going on here. So that's why we're asking you very specifically, what are you talking about? The 
Yes. Sir, do you have a question? Do you have a question? Yeah, I'm just kind of wondering, do we get any kickback or taxes from the like the Rikers Office? Yes. yes, yes. In fact, that's part of that. that is, yes, that is a very good example of the added value. Is that million dollars I was talking about? Part of that is the Microsoft. Part of that added value is coming from the Microsoft, and there's going to be another round of that coming next year. When, like, Michael Foods and... Well, no, we've got the other half coming, because there's oh, additional tip area. Are they taxed the same way as we are? They actually pay much higher than you. I think what people were after, they're wondering, with all this coming up to the Super Bowl, and they know there's Part of this added back that we're talking about, where those are those new valuations are in fact the thing that you're starting to see the benefit from. That million dollars I just talked about a moment ago, that they're in, involved in that. That's part of that. And as we go forward in the future, we'll see more return on that over time. I know at one time, like up in Dallas County, uh, you know, was the highest growth rate. You know, if you had a house down you know, the lake or something, they would be in the front there. They could tax you up to 25% of the property value. But that's what we're wondering if the high people and all of them are paying and all of them. Oh, absolutely. They're, they're paying their share. And the incentives that have been put in place there are specifically within the cities themselves, which is not something that affects you as a rural resident. So any of the decisions that have been made from a city like Norwalk or Cumming or West Des Moines, which is also in, in Warren County, those decisions that are made by those cities are just that, within their cities. They do not impact you as a rural Warren County resident. Those are decisions that are being made by the folks in those cities. You know, it doesn't affect you at all. But in the back side of it, when those developments occur, they are part of the county. So then you do get the added value that comes in from those, the, the rural portion that's applied to those, those folks. So county taxes are 20% of uh, so typically what you'd see, and I, it depends upon what school district you're in, makes a difference. Um, if you're over here east of Indianola, I'm going to use that one as an example. That particular area pays about 68% of the property tax goes towards the school district. About 28% goes to the county, the remainder. And then there's another small portion, I don't know if it's the township or something else, but that would be the, the total that would be, that's how it breaks out. So the part of the tax bill, property tax bill we're talking about here, depending upon where you are in the county, is probably somewhere between 20 and 25 and 30 percent of your total tax bill. The school district is going to be typically two-thirds of your property tax bill. This is the small part. What we're talking about here now is this, the smallest of the small part because the, the rural levy is actually only a small portion of your county portion, which is, which is a, a portion of your overall. So we're talking about a subset of a subset right now. Thank you. 
before we didn't have the traffic, we didn't have the lane for when I ask, that. I'm going to turn the question around. How do you think they're taxed now? Uh, they're taxed the same as me. Uh, so, doesn't that answer your question? No, because by adding them, they're putting more burden on my infrastructure. They're actually taxed. They're actually, they're doing just the opposite. Because of what I said a moment ago about the added valuation. We're talking about new valuation. They're actually adding to the big. They are adding, to the they're big. adding more costs. They're adding more burden on the road. They're adding more burden on the sewer system. They're adding lightning pollution. They're adding noise pollution. They're adding all of them. had enough discussion about the history and you know what the values are I think it's time to figure out if we're going to do a tax increase or if we're going to slash the engineers budget or we're going to take money out of savings I say we don't they're doing more or less right now taking revenue away from the care of the team for me something different that's my feeling it sounds like everyone else here we don't want to take money away from our engineer and his team right right I say take it away from the engineer because they don't do that on the road anyway. They don't even clean the ditches up down there. No, no. Okay. We're going to show one hand that don't have any money to take away from the budget. Okay. Okay. It's more. It's still a whole car is on the road down there. Okay. Well, 
Is there any other input on that, those three scenarios? I do have a question. If you bring the tax levy, is it going to stay in our area, or is it going to go to Marlott, or is it going to go to Carlisle, or is it going to stay in our area? It's going to it's going to stay in the it's going to stay in the engineer's budget, which is all rural. The, the, re, the levy range you're talking about actually only applies to the rural areas. It does not go to support the cities. But what I'm saying is the roads north of the Nola are better than the ones south. Are better That's true. Than the Where did the so people live? Money goes north and not north. Yeah, that's common knowledge for everybody down there. We all know that. I can guess that. That's, uh, well, let's just put it this way. The rural areas of the county, that's all we're talking about here. We're not talking about the cities. We're, I'm not talking about the city either. I'm talking no, about we're, we're the talking, rural roads. We're talking about the rural areas here at the county. I'm talking about rural roads. I'm so when you, we're talking about the rural, rural levy rate, mm -hmm. what we're talking about is increasing that up and you paying an extra $80 a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, and all that money goes in to the rural levy rate, which 100% of that money goes to the rural people. So, okay. That's what she's saying. She's what she decided to do. She's saying that the gravel roads are better gravel roads than the gravel roads. Can we ask you that question, David? Do you put more emphasis on northern versus southern in your operations? No. Hey, what's wrong with our road? Why is it such a mess? Can you pull up a map from 2015 and we'll die out of the it's ultimately David's decision on how he does the operations of his road. We can certainly influence him. And I mean, when people call me and they say, I got a problem with my road, I call David and he has somebody out there the next day. I've called, I don't know how. Who do you call? I've called Chris. Okay. And well, you know maybe you should call somebody happen. else. We live on a main drag down there, and they don't right. mow any of the ditches or the brush. Okay. I've heard you, I've heard enough. Okay. I've absolutely heard the lady, enough. The lady in the back. Clark Electric takes care of your side, though. Yeah, Clark, okay, fine. Do you want to raise your taxes? No. Okay. I, but I don't want to, I say cut it, because you don't do nothing. Yeah. Okay. All right, cut Would it. you do a per fee thing? Well, so if you need some rock down there, you pay the county with your credit card to come down there and fix your road for you? No, I'm not going to do that. Like, but, but you won't pay any taxes. You won't pay any rural taxes. Would you do it? No. Okay. Yes, I think the lady got it. That's an option. That's true, but just like every household, you know, it's the same as a cow. You need a basic safety net. I agree. You know, you have to determine that. I mean, the same thing kind of happened with our Justice Center. I mean, what we're talking about is very similar to how the Justice Center stuff came together, where we had to determine our costs and we had to determine what we were going to go out for a bond issue on. And the communication broke down between what it was going to cost, the overall cost of the project, versus what we were going out to bond for. This is the exact same scenario financially. 
we're trying to figure out what our costs are to maintain the roads, and we're trying to figure out our revenues to maintain our roads. We still have some missing variables, but ultimately, we can, we can kick this can down the road. That's what happened at the Justice Center. Let's just go out for bond on $29 million, and if it costs 35, then that's what it costs. We don't really know. We, we, you know what, we'll close our eyes to those problems and what's going to happen a year from now or what's going to happen two years from now. This is the time to fix the problem. This is the time to get balanced in our budget. It's a tough decision, but we should be making it now. Right, exactly. I totally agree. That's why we ran. Yep. That's why we ran. Exactly. Because I'm asking you to be fiscally responsible today. I think there's something uh, as well with this budget that people aren't taking into consideration. There was a 39 cent drop last year. Also because the mental health levy is now paid by the state. So they took that off of our rule levy. So in essence, to remain it flat from last year to the year before would be to go up 39 cents because that is no longer being collected. We gave that to you as a tax um, credit. Some counties went ahead and kept it on and then they used it in their roads and they got penalized by the state. But we gave it to you as a tax credit. So. Although it didn't help our roads, an increase in that would help our roads. I'm not advocating 39 cents, but I'm just saying that that was what came off to make it that inflated $1.67 last year as opposed to adding 39 more cents to that. So Crystal, what would your position be? We're in a public meeting so I can ask this question. What is your position on our budget and the issues that we have today with the rural basic levy rate? Which option, what do you think we should be doing? Well, I don't wanna use savings. Um, I understand what you said. I think that makes a, a good position, but the obligations that we have for that savings is part of the uh, shop that we're building. And I don't want to go into more debt for that shop. I'd rather pay it out of savings and still leave a cushion for us. So I don't want to use that. Um, we still have landslides that may happen. We still have other emergencies that may happen. It's nice to have that savings. So I would advocate um, going up the dollar. I am rural. I live in the rural. This affects me and my family as well. I live on gravel. I'm not saying anything like the other two don't, but they are trying to be fiscally responsible now. So we can listen to them now. And I know that what they're making um, the decision on is very, very good. I want to give him his full budget. I would like to see David get a full budget. He's had. I know one year you got a full budget. <coughs> we were going to give it to you last year. Did you get one last year? Uh, yeah, that, that one year was kind of the breaking. I mean, it's a turning point for the county and a good one. I mean, it was. But you know, you look back. I've been here eight years. Every every one of those years, it's at least a million dollars to cut. But in my first year, I just gave the analogy. It's like putting marble in a separate jar, and the marble never goes in a separate jar. Yeah. So we're he had. I wish I could show you the maps that I had of Warren County of the projects that needed to be done. When I got on the board, he had been here six months. And there were dots all over there for projects that had not been done. He had not, he got one year in the nine years that I've been here that he has had his full budget. Let me, let me break this down. At the state, they give an engineer throughout Iowa, you can only get so much money. So whether we had a whole bunch of money to give him, he couldn't accept it because the state puts a limit on that. Now we at Warren County, as a board of supervisors, only gave him his full maximum amount one year out of the nine years that you've been here. So if you want to see better projects and these things done in Warren County, give him his maximum budget. And that's what this raise in tax will do. 
So, but you've already made cuts to the one that you submitted, so it's already the adjusted budget. You're looking at trying to make more cuts because you had submitted a budget that, when I was at the meeting the last week, had already been slashed. Correct? Yes. So this is yes. not even the original. Well, let, let, let's talk about that. Is what is the increase from last year's budget to this year's budget for David as it sits right now? It's about a 10 percent increase, correct? Over last year, he's getting an additional 10 percent as it sits right now. Is that accurate? And I'll say that the first budget we submit shows that he had one because how do you know to comment on something if you don't have the information on the front end? So we like to lay out the pay. I call it. It's sticker shock. It's uncomfortable. But if the board doesn't see the need to the once, then how can they make an informed decision? So kind of a, yes, we reduced the budget, but maybe it was more like a 1.5 million dollar reduction versus 2.4 million because the word needs built into that budget. You know, need might be. We get an inkling there's a big asphalt plant coming and say we're going to put some asphalt work in the budget. That's not necessarily a want, but we know that there might be material in there. And we see those cost savings. So things like that are cost savings. So it's kind of a double edged sword, but the first budget, and that's our philosophy, is we want to show all the information on the So as of right now, you're asking for an additional million dollars, or are you asking for 2.5 million? We're asking to remain at our current We're asking to remain at A 10% increase over last year thanks to inflation. Yeah, when you speak of inflation and you know, construction increases, those are all built in the construction increases. The big one would be diesel, for instance. So what is the total amount of your but that the what's the total amount of the budget that you're proposing for FY 2024 for the engineering department? 13.9 million. 13.9 million. Which includes the uh, shop facilities and the new salt sand shop. Yeah. So you kind of have to back that number down. Right. Back that number down. Some of the facilities we're building that we plan on using some of those are And what's the gen what's the real fund transfer amount on the his new budget then? Uh, it's equivalent to the <laughs> So is it 3.25 million dollars? Okay. Yeah, if you factor up facilities, we're around 11.7. We're 11.7. Okay. So that's a good solid budget. Um, it was like 10.1 million dollars last year, so it's about a, a little more than a 10 percent increase in the overall budget. But it's not a big number, and I know people don't like it, but there is inflation in his cost with fuel, sand, rock, wages, um, but. It's not a reason to raise taxes, it's just a function of reality of what's going on with this cost. And um, so, so uh, what I'm hearing today is that if we, we have to publish our max levy rate for all of our funds, including the rural basic levy rate fund, today or tomorrow. So, so we're going to put something in the paper that says our max levy rate. The last time we did this, we put it at three dollars and one cents. We're talking about a potential dollar raise, which would put it at two dollars and sixty-seven cents. Um, I don't want to get persecuted for a for a tax increase that I don't propose. So it's really hard. We have to publish a rate that people are going to take as an 80% increase in their overall property tax burden, which is not what we're doing. But we have to publish them tomorrow, and that's why we're having this meeting. I thought that was next one tomorrow. So the actual, they have to go, the actual code, they have to, you have to um, publish in our newspaper 10 to 20 days before the public hearing. And the format of what is published is done in the Iowa Department Management's website. So we have a form that we have to fill out to submit to the newspapers for the public hearing that will occur on March 21st. So that's when the board will actually set the maximums. It's still not when they're setting your final levy rates. They are setting the absolute maximum tax levy rates that they can go to. And then 
then they do the budget hearing in April. That's when the budget is set and the actual levy is card officially is set. So on March 21st is the date when the hearing occurs. Uh, but we have to publish the maximum numbers that they can set at that hearing in the paper that has to get submitted to the paper by tomorrow morning. Can they put it in maintenance terms? We realize now that our taxes are going to go up 80 percent. That's that's a shock. Good point. I think it's great. It's still going to come up. I've been down here 40 years when I first started. 40 years ago, it was three hundred and eighty or something for a year. Now it's over six thousand. I built a nice house and some sheds and all that. I built a little bit of it. 40 years. Yeah, we're going to do this. So when I see 80 percent come out. Do you know what the valuation of your property is right now? I don't know. It's, it's going up so much. We just built here. Uh, I'm guessing if your taxes are around 5000 that it's like 300000 Yeah, my house. My so house yeah. so can, we can give you, if we raise our lever rated dollar, I can tell you almost to the penny what that means to you personally in your taxes. Well, I understand that. This is Yes. Know, it's almost done. And then if our, our values of our land is going up and everything, and it's going to be tripled, is what you're hearing. Yeah. Yeah. So now, when you're talking, so you're about, well, this is the other, you're about, yeah, we're about, we're talking about. I'm talking about 100% of our taxes. We're not, we're not talking about, we're not skyrocketing. No, we're not. Okay, so it needs to be published that we are talking about 10% increase on our 28%. Unfortunately, the form is set by the state. So what we publish is a form which is I do have to go in and plug in, and it's printed by the state per code on what we have to print. So, like the information that's going, that this is going to go on to our website. That's what they're saying. But yes. we're, we're tied on what we publish. We have to follow a specific form. We have to vote. Yes, okay. Give you, you a license. Give 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 you a license. No, it's 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 not really published like that. It's published per levy rate. So we put in our levy rates in the county, and we put the potentially max for each one of those. The irony is for the city people, the, all their all their levy rates are maxed out. We can't raise those anymore. They're maxed out by code. The, we only can adjust two of our levy rates: our general supplemental and our rural. So. When, and when we publish it, it's per levy rate. So whoever it was, the entities that interpreted that, and I can tell you it was Farm Bureau, they interpret that as an 80% increase and blasted that out on social media. But, but it's a, it was a total misunderstanding of what work the county's trying to get done. And it created a lot of hysteria. And I'm still getting emails from people, hardworking people, that are saying, Darren, please don't raise my taxes 80%. I can't afford it. That's still the theory out there. So when you blast things out on social media, please be careful, because you have to be accurate with what we're talking about. I don't want, but if, if we go up a dollar, that's going to represent a 60% tax increase from 
the, from that rural levy rate. So what was probably going to happen is we're going to get crucified again for raising your taxes 60%. We can put it on our website, we can email it to people, we can do a better job of communicating, and that's what we're gonna, that's what we intend to do, but um, I just, based on what Crystal McIntyre has just said about what she's willing to do with taxes, um, you know, I think that is gonna be, it. I mean, what I'm hearing from the most of the people is we do need to raise our, our rural basic levy rate nominally a little bit 100 bucks a year 150 bucks a year and for people for most people and keep and keep the level of service high folks that's what we need to do we want to have the best road we want Warren county to have the best roads we're never going to get there if we don't do this measure we're never going to be the best road pro David wants to be the best road engineer in the state of Iowa. We, we want to support him to do that. And that's what we're trying to do. I totally agree. I, I can tell you some stories about how Warren County has spent their money the last five years that would make you cry all night long. I, I know it. I know it. That's, that's why we're here. You know, somebody said the other day, Warren County supervisors are stupid for spending $10,000 on a facility upgrade in a break room. It's called a stupid. Not realizing that we had old plumbing, old cabinets, asbestos flooring, and all kinds of things. It was smart to improve that break room, and we used ARPA money to do it. But, you know, people will tell you that we've made dumb decisions, and I can tell you, Warren County, it's hard to do this job. There's a lot of implications to the decisions we're making today, and that's why I don't want to kick the can down the road and say, I'm, while I'm here, I want to make the right decisions um, that provide us the right amount of revenue for the right level of service, so we can, together, we can make this county a better, even a better place. And I think people will be accepting of that, but I want to see who can put it in That's right. Is the total, is the I would encourage people, like, I, I would like to get a handle on that because I think David will fix the problems if he's aware of them. I do, I do think, and now he's not going to build 12 miles of concrete between two towns because we can't do that. But if you've got a rut, he wants to know about that rut so he can fix it before it gets worse. I'm convinced of that. David, you have an answer for that. Are you talking specifically on the gravel road? I'm, I'm talking specifically on the gravel road. I'm, I'm talking very funny. flooding in December and it knocked all the system down in December. That's why there's no long term plan for gravel roads. Weather dependent. What our staff here is that when the roads are great, our staff has the weather. When the helmet looks so great, it's better than the road. Mm -hmm. Are you saying that if we have a problem, we call you, you're going to come out there and, and you're going to send somebody out there within a reasonable we time to fix every, it? every single service that we get. We so can't have to take it, but we assess it as I talked to you in person one time about taking care of the trees in front of my driveway because I could not see cars coming by. You said you had it. Some kind of machine that goes down there and cuts the brush and everything. You didn't have nobody to operate it. Just a little sidebar for you. I've, I've been kind of doing a little comparison just to kind of see how our neighbors next to us are all charging for their rural levy. It's right here on your sheet. And if you look at every single one of our neighboring counties that touches Warren County, every one of is above three dollars and forty cents for their living. Every single one of them. And if you really want to check it out, you'll see that those that are closest to us are closer to four dollars or over four dollars. So at a dollar sixty. 
Well, no, we are. We're comparing our baseline to the baseline. This is exactly the same information that all of us are. Because if you go on to the website, double check the rates. Right. I, I, I think I, I agree with that. I, I agree with that. But your rural, the, the, what, what caused the issue, rural, what I we're talking about. The I mean, if, if I, you know, we heard. Um, I see a vote. I understand kindness. I understand that. Yes. I understand yes. how to manage all this. Yes. I understand yes. that. Yes. Okay. Excellent. So, so you understand where our levy rate is at versus where Madison is. I think that's a good, that's the right decision. The order of protection, the order of protection, I want that explained in the paper and just to be able to throw 80% of the Right. And we want, I would suggest we write a press release live. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe word a press release. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're, we're in direct, like I'm in direct, and I wasn't before, but I'm in direct communication with Farm Bureau. So I think that's going to be my first call once we establish as a board what our max levy rate's going to be. I'm going to call and explain that to them and to a few others. And, and we're, we've got a massive money. If anybody has an email address and they want updates from the county and, and we don't have them, we want them because we're going to blast our information now and start being proactive about what we're actually doing and what the reality is to anybody that will listen to us. And so if you can give us your email addresses, we'll put that in our pool and we're going to blast out a public statement. That way we'll talk to Farm Bureau. I think I can, I can calm this down. But ultimately, I just want to make sure, as a community, that we're making the that everybody understands why we're making the decisions we're making, and we can agree on it. Like I've heard, let's raise it a dollar, let's raise it whatever we need to because we want good roads. And I love, I'm, I think that's a reasonable thing, and that aligns with what I would like to do in the county, and I think our other supervisors increase the level of service, give David the power to make your roads good, and we're bordering on not doing that right now. Go ahead, sir. Like myself, I farm all my life. Like myself. You yeah. know, I live, uh, I live uh, you know, on farm ground. Now, is this include, as far as the total, it includes all the land plus my house. And then the 28% off that. You do, know, you, do you own farm ground? Pardon? Do you own farm crop ground? Yeah, I don't want to talk that's taxed at an entirely different rate than the others. That's agricultural rate. That's an that's zoned agriculture. Your stuff that's zoned uh, rural residential is what we're talking about. So that would be your land where your house is, and your sheds, and your outbuildings, and your house. That's what this is. This is concerned. Oh, that's, that's only what that includes. Correct. And not the open, not corn and soybean and alfalfa. Correct. Correct. And that, when you talk about the wedding venues and the other things that are bringing more traffic to the rural areas, they're, um, they're taxed at a different um, category. Like, we're talking residential right now. The wedding venues would be a commercial entity. So they are taxed at a whole higher percentage rate. So they are kind of offsetting the more traffic and whatever that they're taking our resources. And then, of course, our ag is way down there it is not you know it doesn't compensate the county for for the increased traffic during harvest during plant times you know the huge combines that we have today um, the roads were not 
made for that kind of traffic, but yes. we are trying to compensate that with this kind of budget. Okay, so in other words, this is my home and the few acres that I got around in my office. Yeah, and if you go and on this yeah. and my other cars, you're not touching. Well, it, you may be touched them, but we are. But the ag, if your land is zoned ag, it's at a totally different, lower rate. It is completely different. We we have 16 acres, and that's a hundred and something a year. Whereas our home, with our two two three acres where our home is, it's well above three thousand. If you if you can give me your I mean I, this applies to everybody send me your address and we'll figure your, exactly what this dollar increase in your labor rate means to you I'm ha we're happy to do well, that. It would be nice. yeah, I can my what is it? Seven eight zero three thirtieth Avenue North, but that's I've got property on two different locations. Seventy eight zero three thirtieth Avenue. Yeah, I just got. Do you have an email address? Uh, J. Uh, <laughs> w. A. T. T. S. 1069. At AOL.com. Well, I'll just do a little summary for your property and exactly what this means for you. Is that okay? And I'll send it to you in an email. Would you email it to me? Yeah, of course. Okay. That was a good point. Okay. Probably should tell me. Yes, yes, yes. See, I think everybody's scared by this. It needs to be more explained in the paper. There's a lot of people. It does. Yes. Well, we're going to do that on our own with our citizens directly and not rely on the papers to do that. So we're going to, Crystal may have a good idea. We're going to put together a press release on this and exactly what it means and get you all the information out directly to you. And not because, you know, like, I, I looked up, I don't you know, before I come, I was trying to find out that time it was nine or ten o'clock, but I was on the engineer page. I, I looked at your home page either in the same time, I was in there. And the other thing is that we have it during the daytime, people that have it cannot be here, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of little people that work. This was, this was actually just supposed to be a budget work session with our engineer, and then you got a lot of, lot of you know, people wanted to be here. This wasn't a public hearing. This wasn't a, supposed to be a town hall like we're having. We want that because we need your input. But, you know, when we're, and we've got uh, several meetings in the next two weeks, and they're changing because sometimes the engineer can't make it to a particular meeting when we had it set or something comes up. So we're just like everybody else. We're not intentionally trying to change meeting locations or times or keep this away from the public. We're just trying to get a lot of meetings in in, in a short period of time and so we're working with Michaela, and Michaela's right here in the back room. She, she is working hard to try to figure out how to best communicate changes. We're doing it on our website. We're doing it with emails right now. Please bear with us. Okay. No, it's not. driving this bond issue for the last couple years. She really wants to see um, us do that project. And I've been in favor of that project. Um, 
I think Aaron DeCook was in favor of that project. Now, with the changes in the cost structure, what we're asking, it, what we've asked, uh, what we're trying to figure out is what is the cost now because it's about 30% higher than it was last year due to inflation. 40% higher. So instead of $25 million, this thing is uh, $33 million or 40 I think it started at like 15 Yeah, and then it now starts, and started initial discussion that it was around 15 and it increased to 26 and still increasing as and so we feel like the timing is not right to do a major bond issue based on cost. Like it's not, because that's when your taxes are going to go really up. If you would want to start talking about your impact of your taxes, that, that's a huge increase. More, so, bond rates. and bond rates, it, it's not the good, a good financial time to do it or an operational time or a cost time to do it. It's, and who would be the responsible for You would. All of us. Everybody in Warren everybody County. Everybody in Warren everybody County. Everybody in Warren County it would be on your stack, tax statement. Just like everybody in Warren County is paying for the Warren County Justice Center right now. Are we renting out any of the cells other counties or jails or do we do any of that? Do we do of that? Yeah, actually, you, you'd be very pleased with our sheriff and what he is doing. We're, um, we're getting very close to having a contract with an adjacent county, a large adjacent county, to bring uh, 10 to 15 to 20 inmates into our jail at a rate of $60 per night. And it's about potentially, and I don't want to speak for the sheriff or make him, but several hundred thousand dollars of increased revenue to Warren County, which will make our payments on our justice center. So we're doing, we, 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 those are great questions. And we do do a lot of trying to manage the, the cost and do things. We're right now looking at facilities. We pay rent on a facility that's $6,000 a month. And we have the DHS staff, our general assistant staff, and our hourly ball staff in that facility that we do not own that um, we pay rent on. So when we went to the Justice Center, we had a building that opened up. All our people went into the Justice Center. We, have, we own a building downtown. So right now we're working on bringing those people from the building we rent and bringing them into the building we own, which will be a $60,000 cost savings. We've also um, decreased uh, the House of Mercy budget last year, which we couldn't find a net good, real positive net result of the money that you people were spending. So we, we cut that. We're, we're constantly looking at cost reductions. And when we say we'd like some management at, at Warren County, I'd like a procurement manager that's looking at every dollar we're spending every single day. Because we, can't, we don't have that ability to do that level of management as a supervisor. So when you see, hey, they want to do this crazy thing or do that crazy thing, in my world, that all relates to fiscal responsibility. I know we're not getting the best deal for our money in a lot of cases here. Crystal knows it and Mark knows it. But how do we get down to start making the phone calls, start figuring out the better deals, meeting with the new vendors? That's why, we, that's why we're trying to maybe have a, a leader or an administrator within the county to start controlling that cost. Because we can pay somebody $100,000 and they can take a million dollars out of our budget likely. And that's a $900,000 cost savings to us. We're thinking from a business perspective all the time at the, at the Board of Supervisors. I can tell you that um, we all come from a business, a military, a diverse background, and we could be powerful if we could get together. Like if we, we, we have the right um, mentality to go after these costs. And that's what, that's what we're, we're attempting to do. But we, but we, can't, let, we can't let our engineer and our, and our level of service go down right now, even though times are tough. Like this is when we want to really invest and we really want to make sure Warren County is um, the professional entity that you deserve. Like when you need something from the county, if you need something from the sheriff or the county attorney or the auditor or the treasurer, that we're there to get that call and treat you with the ultimate respect and get you the services you need. That's the goal of Warren County. That's what we're trying to do. We're not trying to raise your taxes 80%. We're not trying to have secret meetings. We're not trying to do anything behind the scenes. We want you to be a part of what we're doing. We love these public meetings. 
And that's why we're here. Yeah, and, and that's why we're so glad to have you. We still have that meeting that you said we have planned over the 21st of next month, and we're going to try to get the yes. school auditorium. Uh, we are trying to get the school auditorium for the 21st for the ending of tax levy also. That's for the setting the very max tax levy rate for all of our funds. We ha that's a public hearing where the public comes in and tells us what they think about it. All of our funds that you're talking about, all of our funds, still the 28 percent are the top. Only the, only the things that relate to the county. So we're talking about the 28 percent, not the. Uh, Hundred percent. Because the school district is going to be two thirds, the county is going to be maybe about a third, a little less than that. Well, like I said, I've been down here for like I said, I've been here for quite a while. Make a real nice place. Jim Butler knows that. He knows, and I've taken it upon myself, and I've taken it clean with this. Some people, when they want to a little extra that we got to put out. A little extra is helping us put out. I've helped the trouble a lot. Uh, we've got a new bridge down there. We've got a new kind of pavement going down there. You know, I feel that we're all set in a really good place. But I still don't mind paying that guy. I still don't mind to get him what he needs and him what he needs. But also, if you've got a little extra, sure, one of the extra, you know, I feel you know, I feel do that. I want to. Pre I appreciate the public. I appreciate all the comments. We learn every single time we have these meetings, and I hope to have more of them the whole time I'm here. Like to sit down in this kind of format and have these dialogues. We're not all going to agree, you know, every single time, but we have to understand. Well, you got to understand us too, you know. When uh, our point of view, this is why we're here, is because we have tried and tried and tried. And tried. It seems yep. like that's yeah. Well, the last thing we want to do is slash the engineer's budget. Okay, so I will. On an idea like this, help me out. On an idea like, this, an idea like uh, this maintenance building, you know, we need to do maintenance building. So, how does this get passed out? I mean, uh, the maintenance guys say we need a new building, you guys agree. Well, then how do we decide how big a maintenance, what we're doing with this That's building? Been it decided. says six million, I'm sure it's probably way more than that when you add for everything else. The size of the central location is based on the the central location is not size of the house, every piece of equipment is on the phase one of about two more phases out there to get the necessary storage. But that building is still size for the other four corners of the county to have three or four main shed facilities. So that central facility that we can see just a mile away is size with the satellite facility. So he's got a strategic plan to have a central facility, which is what's right here, and then strategic locations to stockpile <coughs> within Warren County so we can respond quicker, we can do a better job, we have belly dump trucks. I mean, he's building a uh, department to increase the level of service. Well, let's help him do it. Let's help him do it. That's exactly right. Okay. That's. Exactly. Thank you. Get up 
we're doing our very, very best, and I appreciate your input on that. What do you have? Thank you. 